closest to a rock and stirred up some foam. She sharpened the razor, taking as long as she dared. When he coughed impatiently, she took a position, raised the razor and prayed. But not to Nuggan, never to Nuggan since her mother died. And then Lofty was running across the ground trying to shout a whisper. Movement! Blouse nearly lost another earlobe. Out from nowhere came Jackram, boots on but suspenders dangling. He grabbed Lofty by the shoulder and swung her around. Where? he demanded. There's a track down there. Troopers, carts. What do we do, Sarge? We keep the noise down, muttered Jackram. Are they heading up here? No, they went right past Sarge. Jackram turned and gave the rest of the squad a satisfied look. OK. Corporal, take Carbrandum and Perks and go and take a look. The rest of you, tool up and try to be brave, eh, Lieutenant? Blouse bemusedly dabbed foam off his face. What? Oh, yes. Uh, see to it, Sergeant. Twenty seconds later, Polly was running after Maledict, down the slope. Here and there, the bottom of a valley could be seen through the trees, and as she glanced down, she saw sunlight flash off something metal. At least the trees had coated the wooden floor with a thick layer of needles, and contrary to popular opinion, most woods aren't lifted the branches to snap out. They reached the edge of the woods where bushes fought one another for their place in the sun and found a spot for the view. There were only four troopers in an unfamiliar uniform, riding in pairs ahead and behind a cart. It was small and had a canvas cover. What's in a little cart that four men have to protect? said Maledict. It must be valuable. Polly pointed to the huge flag that hung limply from the pole on the wagon. I think it's the newspaper man, she said. It's the same cart, same flag, too. Then it's a good thing they've gone right past, hissed Maledict. Let's just see them out of sight and creep away like good little mice, OK? The party was travelling at the speed of the cart, and at this point the two riders...